Good morning. Welcome to our worship for the third Sunday in Lent. We're making our way through this season of penitence and fasting and I hope joy and peace. Please join me in morning prayer, right one, from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. Well, let us begin. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. Please join me in the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 19. We'll read that together. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of its chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. 
The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading together the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided 
through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, the stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are to be called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A song of penitence. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may be repent, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is a glory to ages to ages. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I assume you're already seated, so I don't have to tell you. Today's scriptures show us some things about God that we may not like to think about, but we must. In our gospel today, we start with the Passover of the Jews was at hand. 
We don't often like to think about the Passover and what it meant. It meant that God's angel of death passed over the houses of the Jews who had sprinkled the blood of the lamb over their doorposts and yet destroyed, destroyed the firstborn of the Egyptians, killed them all, including Pharaoh's own child. We don't like to think about God that way, but it's a fact. It happened. We don't like to think about the commandments that were delivered by God through Moses to the chosen people of Israel, telling them what not to do and what to do. We Americans don't like to be told what to do. Witness how many traffic tickets are sent out every week because we don't like to be told what speed we can drive. What does all this mean? Well, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us, it is the power of God. Now we come to what we used to call in the old days when I was young and going to seminary, the cleansing of the temple. And another thing about God that we don't like to think about, Jesus was angry but he sinned not. What he did was fascinating, and we want to sweep that under the rug. I actually heard a Jesuit once say, what happened here was that Jesus had a bad day, but he didn't. He did not have a bad day. What he did was he walked into a situation that was corrupt, and he cleansed it. And he chased it out of the temple. How did all this come to be? Well, in those days, and for generations before, when one sinned and needed to make atonement, they were required to sacrifice to God an offering. And depending on the sin, the cost of that offering, and therefore the sacrifice to the individual, rose up. Over time, it started maybe as a way of being convenient. We'll, we'll supply you with these animals. It'll be fine. You don't have to do anything but pay us. Later, if one didn't have the money to pay for this atonement, and they tried to bring their own animal in or sacrificial offering, the priests would deem it unworthy. It would be rejected. But we have all these animals and grain offerings and atonement offerings over here on sale now and they're all approved and that is a situation Jesus walked into and saw and so making a whip of cords he drove them out of the temple overturned the tables of the money changers told everyone to get out and I can only imagine where it says the Jews came to Jesus and said what sign can you give us for doing this that they must have been shaking with rage. Why? One, Jesus was right. The temple was a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. And that's the translation that I grew up hearing, a den of thieves, not a marketplace. This is my house, it's a place of prayer, it is not, insert the name of your favorite grocery store. That's not at all what this was. This was God showing displeasure at corruption and sin. It's been said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Didn't quite say that in the psalm this morning, but it came very close. Elsewhere it does say those exact words. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Never think, never think that God is okay with sin. God is not. Never think that you can gain permission to sin. You cannot. We choose to sin, and we must therefore repent and return to the gospel and the good news of God in Christ. And Lent is a special time of year for just those sorts of activities. But it's also a time to be reminded that God isn't all about peace, love, and joy, and infinite patience. The patience of God is finite. And there are times where God's patience 
runs out and where things happen. Those who were in the camp of Moses who sinned grievously following the deliverance of the second set of tablets. Remember the first set were destroyed because the people, while Moses was on the mountain receiving the, commun- the commandments of God and also being in communion with God for 40 days and nights, they made a, an offering. They made an idol of gold and worshiped it in the camp. And how did God respond to that? Not well. How did Moses respond to that? Not well. Remember that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And this is what we see in the gospel today. God showing righteous indignation. God saying, get this out of my temple. It hit the temple authority in the purse strings. And it absolutely infuriated them. And from that moment on, they sought to destroy Christ and to kill him, to get him gone. And they demanded a sign. And as St. Paul says in his epistle for this morning, Jews demand signs, Greeks desire wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, which is foolish to those who are perishing, foolish to the wise, and a stumbling block to the Jews, And it's our life and our salvation for those who believe. So what's our takeaway today from these scriptures? Well, as we get to our collect here in just a few moments, we will see a little bit more. But what is it? Don't ever forget that just because God hasn't thrown a lightning bolt at us, that we're getting away with anything. We're not. Our sins, well, they damage our relationship with God. And they must be dealt with. And in fact, God in his love and mercy and through the action and ministry of Jesus, our Messiah, his death on the cross and his resurrection that we will celebrate in just a few weeks, gave us the gift of reconciliation. It means that now one or two sins don't bar us from ever entering into the kingdom of heaven. It means we now have access through the blood of Jesus. It means we have that hope. And thanks be to God for that hope and that victory. Remember, we don't demand signs. We don't demand wisdom from God because God's wisdom seems strange and foolish to us. Why should the Messiah suffer? Why would God care that the temple authorities were simply making life easier for the Jewish people? and uh, perhaps a bit of profit for themselves. Never think that God isn't paying attention at all times. Contrary to some laws and some cultures that want to compartmentalize off our world, there's no place where God is not. No place. And as I always joked in college and beyond, oh, you can try and ban prayer in schools, but you'll never stop it, especially during finals week. We will pray for God's help. You can't stop that. Let us pray. Lord, we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves or to save ourselves. Let us each find you mighty to save. Defend us against all adversities and evil thoughts and evil actions by the enemy. Defend us. Help us to find you mighty to save in our time of need. In Christ's name, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Please now join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endure thy ministers, endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God forever and ever, Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee that the days to come may be spent in thy favor. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold. Pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Reading from our chapel prayer list, we pray for Jackie Williams, Marcine Thompson, Nancy Summers, Dale Pedrick, Libby Lafitte, Rod Hull, Pat Murphy, Effie Phillips, Charlie Beasley, Wally Banky, Mike Bonner, Mary Kynard, Norma Perkins, 
Ethel Louder, Retta Miller, Emma Byers, Harry Bull, Margaret Jenkins, William Salisbury, Ruta Bly, Joy Paget, Barbara Webb, James, Frank Kynard, Susan Heron, Lil Lawrence, Sarah Condy, James Haldeman, Judy Hickman, Judy Halford, and Evelyn Dorch. We pray for the safety of our military, remembering especially Edward and Katie Cloyd, Brian Dugan, Ricky Ayers, and Steve Richardson. And we celebrate birthdays this coming week of Reed Ellis, Richard Sassant, Sarah Condy, and Jim Geddes. Let us pray our prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that, with, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. For those of you who are unable to come to the chapel to receive Holy Eucharist this day, let us pray a prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your, res your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of the altar, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And our prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost rest upon you and remain with you today and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
keeps to love and to serve the Lord.